my Malkins moments. I have some great Malkins moments for you. The first is with Rams wide receiver Cooper Cup, who set a single-season franchise record for the most receptions in a season. He, he recorded his 122nd reception of the season past Isaac Bruce for the most receptions in franchise history. Actually, Isaac Bruce tweeted at him last night, sending his congratulations. And Cooper Cup just, again, continues to, to make his case for Offensive Player of the Year in the NFL because he, he's he got 14 touchdown receptions, which are the second most in Rams in a, in, in Rams history behind Elroy Hirsch, who had 17 in 1951. And the Rams still have a couple more games to play, so I wouldn't be surprised if he surpasses that. But he leads the NFL in catches, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. And again, last night, nine catches, 136 yards, two touchdowns against the Seattle Seahawks. He's just an explosive player, an explosive talent, and he's just having one of these sensational years that deserves a lot of credit. So big shout out to him. Big shout out to the New Orleans Saints. As I mentioned, they it's rare to be able to provide some history for Tom Brady. And they held him to zero points. They shut him out for the first time since 2006. And a big reason why was because of Cameron Jordan. They won nine, nine zip. And Cameron Jordan had two sacks on the GOAT. And he recorded his 100th sack of his NFL career. There are only like 35 to 40 NFL players in the history of the game that have recorded over 100 sacks. And now Cameron Jordan is one of those guys. And the New Orleans Saints surprisingly still have a chance to reach the postseason. They're 7-7, seven and seven, kind of in a three-way tie with the Philadelphia Eagles and the Minnesota Vikings. So it's interesting to see how that is all going to shake out. We'll see how that shakes out. But big shout-out to him. In women's college basketball, there was a marquee matchup last night. Top two teams in the nation, number one, South Carolina, number two, Stanford. South Carolina came back from 18 points down in the first half to beat the Cardinals 65-61. This was the largest comeback in program history for the Gamecocks. And obviously, this was a rematch of the 2021 Final Four matchup that was just a, a, a an entertaining one, to say the least, in the Final Four, 65-66. Stanford outlasted South Carolina last season. And this Gamecocks team, they're really good. Already their second win against the number two ranked team in the nation. That's the first since Baylor did it in 2011 and 2012. And it's their fifth win over a top 10 ranked team. So you're talking about testing yourself early on in the season. Well, the Gamecocks are doing it. They're doing it. They're facing adversity and they're prevailing. They're finding a way to win games, and it's a major, major testament to them. Shout out to Jalen Hurts, the Philadelphia Eagles. He set a new franchise record for the most single-season rushing touchdowns by a quarterback. He's got 10. He just passed Michael Vick in that department. Obviously, we all believe Michael Vick is kind of the godfather of the athletic quarterback that could run around and just act like a video game, Madden stick shift. I remember whenever I played with Madden, I, I was always wanting to play with the Atlanta Falcons, not to mention the Philadelphia Eagles, but the, the version of the game that I had was when Michael Vick was with the Falcons. And I just have a bunch of go routes where I send all the wide receivers down. I drop back with Vick, wait about two seconds, then just sprint past all the offensive linemen and pick up about 15, 20 yards. He was the guy who kind of just changed the game with his athleticism, and now we're seeing it manifest and trickle into guys like Jalen Hurts who are having success, obviously Lamar Jackson, but Jalen Hurts now 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. The, the Eagles just beat the Washington football team yesterday 27-17. to 17. As I mentioned with the Saints, the Eagles are also in this three-way tie with them and the Vikings at 7-7. Seven and seven, They're still very much alive in the postseason battle. So big shout-out to Hurts because he's making a case to be the starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. Say what you want. He's been helping to lead them 
to a 500 record, which for a quarterback is impressive. Not many quarterbacks can do that. And he's been a big catalyst behind this successful season for them. And finally, and by the way, actually, one other point about the Eagles is they became the first team to rush for 175 plus yards in seven consecutive games since the 1985 Chicago Bears. That was one of the best defensive teams in NFL history. Obviously, Jim McMahon was the quarterback, but it was the the defense that just elevated that squad to an to a Super Bowl that season. I think that was the last time that the Chicago Bears won the Super Bowl. So major shout out to them. Uh, to the Philadelphia Eagles. Finally, Steph Curry launched his customized uh, 2974 uh, 2974 NFT collection to celebrate his three-point record for breaking Ray Allen's record and passing Ray Allen for the most three-pointers made in NBA history. He's now atop the list. He's the king of the three-pointer. And to commemorate that, again, it happened at Madison Square Garden. He dropped the 2947 collection. So each NFT is is uh, priced at four hundred ninety nine dollars, but Curry is donating one hundred percent of the profits to uh, his Eat, Learn, and Play Foundation that he and his wife Aisha Curry established in two thousand and nineteen. So a really nice gesture, not an opportunity to exploit monetizing for himself, but to raise money for a greater cause. So big shout out to him. And apparently this kind of custom digital artwork, uh, it represents each made three in his entire sequence of 2,974 three-pointers throughout his NBA career. And every piece includes the game's location, the date, along with Curry's uh, digital signature. Not to mention participating owners have a chance to be selected for uh, to receive autographed memorabilia, tickets to the game, additional NFT drops, and access to Curry brand limited edition items in the future. Uh, and finally, he's apparently going to be gifting about 200 of these NFTs to people who have helped him along the way, whether it was neighbors, rivals, coaches, friends, family, whomever was who he deemed as kind of a big reason behind his success, he's giving out 200 of those NFTs to them. So major shout out to Steph Curry, just continuing to promote the game and, and help out society both on and off the court. Big shout out to him and the Steph Curry brand. That's all the time that I got for you today. Ending a couple minutes early. Thank you so much for joining me right here on Morning Joe every single Monday and Wednesday morning, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 to 11 Central and 8 to 9 a.m. Pacific. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube page, Morning Joe with Jonah Malkin. Follow me on Twitter at Jonah Malkin or at Morning underscore Joe, J-O underscore Instagram, jmalk97, TikTok, Jonah Malkin. And as always, have a lovely rest of your morning and a merry, merry Christmas to you and your families.